I am once again joined by Betsy Broyles of the Broyles Foundation. She specializes in Alzheimer's caregiving. And I decided I was just going to pose a, a question to her in regards to, I just got a diagnosis of Alzheimer's dementia for a loved one. And I don't know where to start. I don't even know what questions to ask. So I'm calling you up on the phone. Uh, what would you say to me? Great question, because that I, I literally get phone calls like that every day saying, I just don't understand the disease. So what I like to do in the beginning is I like to try to give them an idea, you know, what it is that they're dealing with. So, so let's talk a, a little bit about the disease. You know, what's really important is, you know, that they, your, your loved one lives moment to moment to moment. So if you think about rolling hills like this, when they're on top of the hill, they understand everything going on around them, who they're with, what they're doing, and they're okay with it. You can see it in their eyes. But when they slide down in the valley, then you'll see their facial expression change, their body language. And in that moment, they're just unsure of maybe where they are or who they're with and what they're doing. So that's how they live moment to moment to moment. Okay. So what caregivers, what we need to be concerned about is the moment that we're in. Now, another really interesting thing about the disease is as a disease progresses, their age is regressing. So from a caregiver standpoint, you want to try to figure out where they are in this age regression, because it helps you to be able to communicate with them. For example, the husband is looking for his wife and his wife walks in the room. And in that moment, okay, he's in the valley. He doesn't recognize her. Then perhaps he's between maybe age 20 to age 50 because he knows he's married, but he doesn't recognize her because she's gray headed. Okay. So if a mother's looking for her children and her children walk in the room and in that moment, she doesn't recognize them, then maybe she is, you know, in her early, you know, in her twenties to early thirties, because she's thinking of her children when they're young. And then when they start asking for their mom, which they always do, then, you know, they're in their adolescence. And so um, we'll go, you know, a little bit longer into that um, in the extended view. But um, so it, as a caregiver, you want to listen very carefully to things that they say, because it gives you insight into where they are in that moment, okay, through stories and things like that. And then I like to talk about, you know, what is dementia? You know, really dementia is just a medical word that is used when there are changes that are occurring in the brain. You know, it changes how people talk, it changes how people act, it changes, you know, that th they lose the ability to do um, ordinary things like, you know, balance a checkbook, um, um, you know, able to handle their, handle their mail, you know, um, how it changes their speeches, you know, they have a hard time pulling down a word or use or substituting words and it, it changes how they act, they begin to, you know, withdraw and, and, and um, you know, do things like that. So there, there are definite early signs, but that's what dementia is. Think about it's the overall umbrella like cancer. Cancer is the overall umbrella. Then you have prostate cancer and breast cancer and so on and so forth. Dementia is the overall umbrella. And then there's, you know, Lewy body's dementia. You know, there's Alzheimer's, which is the most common, but also Parkinson's and ALS are underneath the dementia umbrella, anything relating to the brain. So think only think about dementia as the overall umbrella, but then there are different types of dementias, just like there are different types of cancers. Then what would be the next thing that they would normally, after they ha grasp it a little bit, what do they ask next? Uh, well, um, generally, I will go into, um, you know, really communication, because to me, if you don't learn how to communicate with them, you're not going to have a good experience. And so, you know, I just step back and look at our experience and what we learned primarily with my mom. And then I start talking to them about the importance of the caregiver. Uh, you know, as you know, they look to you for everything. And so you're um, even how you look at them. And, when, you know, when you walk in a room, it's important to have a you know positive body language. When you're speaking to them, look them straight in the eye so they know that you're listening to them and, and that you care about what it is. And then, I, you know, I, I go into all different caregiving tips that we learned in our experience, like, you know, speak calmly and end your sentences with something positive, like, isn't that great? We're going to have so much fun. And, and, you know, no means no. When they say no, you know, they mean no. I'm just throwing a few examples out there. You know, you, you don't want to argue with them, you know, because you're never going to win it. You know, you just agree with whatever it is they say, and then you do whatever you were going to do anyway. 
um, you know, you try not to correct them, you know, and one of the big things is um, we have to take out of our vocabulary. Don't you remember? I just told you that, which is what we all do. We all, we all said it. I said it. My dad said it, you know, that's just, it's very. Sure. Um, and you gotta, and you gotta be kind to yourself because it takes a while to get that out. I know it was real hard for yeah. me to get that out of my vocabulary at the very beginning, mm-hmm. but now I just yeah. don't, it's not even there anymore. Right. And it, it, it does, you know, everything is a learning experience. I, I used to keep um, two filing cabinets on my shoulder. You know, this one was, okay, I tried that and it worked. So I'm going to use it again. And then this side was never going to do that again. That was not the reaction I thought I was going to get. And so I'm never going to do that. And that's kind of like the no means no. You know, when, when they say no, they, they absolutely mean no. You are not going to change their mind, you know. So that's where you have to learn to redirect their thought process. And, and it's hard because you have to ask yourself, what can I say in this moment to get them to do what I need them to do? So it requires a lot of thought and, and, and it gets easier. I like to call it creative communication because again, it's all about the moment. You know, what is the moment you're in? And, and then, um, because if you have a behavioral change, you know, then you have to ask yourself, what did we, what just occurred and, mm-hmm. and, and backtrack, you know, and that's, you know, that's what I really love working with caregivers about helping them understand situations. But to me, you know, you, One of the things I really talk to caregivers about is um, to learn the eyes. The eyes are your insight into their brain because we have a lot of different looks. You know, what does that mean? Well, you know, when we're happy, are they smiling? You know, those are happy eyes. Or, you know, my mom cried every day. She asked me what was wrong with her and she literally cried every day. And so, you know, she would cry and I would cry. So they have sad eyes and then they have confused eyes, you know, when they're in the valley, there's that uncertainty look, you know, that they get when, when they're confused or they're unsure of where they are or who they're with, or most importantly, you'll see it because they're, they're, they're just not sure what they're supposed to be doing. You know, that's what I realized. My dad used to ask that all the time. And, Mm -hmm. uh, he goes, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. And I guess just hearing you say all that as well is they, you're looking at their eyes, but they're studying you. Every day are really going to bounce off of your tone, mm-hmm. your demeanor. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, you got to love yourself enough to be patient with yourself that <laughs> if you boys had kind of a combative, maybe relationship with your mom, even if it's in fun, uh, that's probably not going to work anymore. Uh, uh, they are looking, like you said, their moment, they're looking to you to gauge that moment. So that's, mm-hmm. that's been really interesting. Uh, and, and you shouldn't look at it as being feeling defeated. If you did, if you didn't get it right, you will get it right. If you're committed to, to that relationship and making them feel safe and comfortable, as you've said so many times. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's all about grace. You know, it's grace for yourself and it's grace for them. I mean, they're so lost and confused and, and, and frustrated and angry. And they go through a whole realm of emotions. Think about how you would feel, you know, if you were losing control of your life and your ability to, to do things and to, to think properly. So you have to give yourself grace and you have to give them grace. You know, that's the only way that you're going to survive because you're never going to do it right. I mean, that's a really important point. You're never going to do this right. So, you know, that's why I had the two filing cabinets. You know, this worked and this didn't work, you know, and that's it's trial and error all the way through the disease. And you you can't beat yourself up, but you need to, like you said, pat yourself on the back and say, you know, you're doing the best job that you can do today. And we all make mistakes. We all get upset. We all get angry. We all do the things that we're not supposed to do while being a caregiver. But, you know, you're in it for the long run and you just got to try to do the best you can every day. That's what's important. Sure. And I realized, too, that um, my own frustration was out of fear and grief, Uh, Mm -hmm. just not wanting the change and wishing it would just go away. And if I could just say something to make it go away, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It, and so if you just uh, begin to resolve that this is how it is and it's going to change. Uh, but, yeah, the grief was uh, I didn't realize that that's what I was experiencing until uh, someone in my in my group in my caregivers group uh, talked about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there comes a point in all caregivers lives. I think 
you know, across the board of all diseases, but especially when it's a terminal disease, like Alzheimer's is, when you reach a point where you begin to understand there, there really isn't any hope of them getting better. You know, there's not any medicines, there's not anything that you can do to, to slow it down or, or, or to change the outcome. And I think when people be, really understand that point, it's heartbreaking. You know, it, it, it really is when you realize today is the best day we're going to have, you know, even though tomorrow can be just as good. But I mean, it's 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 a um, it's a it's a process of changes. You know, this disease is well, and I had to accept the fact, which is, again, another one of those hard steps was mm-hmm. that, yes, my mom loved me, but the love was different. She's if I came in upset about something, she's not going to engage me with it. It's it, and, and you have to understand it as a, as you're, you, you, I was the child and she cared if I was crying or upset and ultimately she still does, but she cannot wrap her mind around extending that to me in a way that, uh, my friends, and that's why you gotta lean on your friends and your, mm-hmm. your, your care group, uh, mm-hmm. and your coaches, uh, for that. And so there's that grief, like, oh, I just want my mom. You know, right. I can't have her the way I used to. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be so gentle and careful not to strike out in disappointment or anger because she can't be the mom that you were used to. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to close by always thanking you and uh, for all that you do at the Broyles Foundation. And I know you and I always like to let people know that the Alzheimer's Association has a 24 seven helpline for absolutely every and any question, as well as uh, the Broyles Foundation for those of you who want to connect with them. Thank you, as always, uh, Betsy. This is good, rich, dense information um, and uh, always appreciate it. That's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.